Hello and welcome. So last video, we put Metasploitable 2, right? we put that virtual machine on our VMware environment, but the people have spoken. They have said, no, Ryan, we want you to do it on VirtualBox. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. Um, so what we're going to do in this video, it's going to be very similar to the last one. Just instead of VMware, we're going to do VirtualBox. Right? You might ask, why do I have to make a separate video for VirtualBox instead of VMware? Shouldn't it be similar? You would hope, but it, it isn't. The networking is going to be a little bit different. We actually have to be more particular with VirtualBox than we do with VMware, unfortunately. But let's dive right in. So first up, I'm not going to look up Spider-Man Metacritic. I'm going to look up Metasploitable Bull 2 VM and hit enter. I'm going to hit the first option here, right? This is Rapid7. They are the creators of Metasploitable 2, so I trust them. Uh, they're going to usher me two possible ways to download it. This side up here, or SourceForge. As I joked about in the last video, the top one asked me for personal inf information. I don't want to open up. Um, so I'm going to go to the second link here. We're going to use SourceForge. All you have to do here is click download. And it'll say your download will begin shortly. And unless it is lying to you, it will work, right? And we'll see it down here. Now, of course, to save you all time, I have already downloaded this, right? So uh, you do not have to wait around for my download, depending on my internet speed. We're going to jump right in here. And we see right here is the zip folder I have. Now, to unzip it in Windows, all you have to do is click right click, extract all. I'm going to hit extract one more time to extract everything right here. And I'll wait a couple seconds for this to all go through. Um, quick note, you might be wondering, why does everything look blown up in my window? Well, it, to make it more readable, I actually have my display percentage at 200% right now. All right, so I have unzipped the folder. It is sitting right here, and this holds my virtual machine that I will be uploading to VirtualBox, right? I'm going to import it basically into VirtualBox here. Key note here, if you did not unzip this fo uh, folder, if you did not uh, extract all of the contents, this isn't going to work. Right, zip folders are compressed, which means that they will not work on you unless you decompress them. Right, it's like uh, what's the best example I could think of? Uh, it, it's kind of like thinking that eating a dried mango is the same thing as a regular mango. You have to rehydrate first. Uh, now that is a imperfect analogy, but uh, we're doing our best. All right, so this is where it's going to get weird for VirtualBox, and it's going to be a lot different from VMware, which is what I showed in the previous video. So let's start up VirtualBox by using our start menu and typing in virt, V-I-R-T, dragging this into view. What I need to do is, unfortunately, I can't just double click like we did with VMware or import this box. I have to hit new and create this from scratch. So I'm going to do new. I'm going to name this Metasploitable. Type is going to be Linux version. I'm going to do DB in 64 bit, and I'm going to hit next. Memory size, you could leave this the same. Doesn't have to be that much memory allocated. Next up for hard disk, this is where it gets pretty spicy. We have to use an existing virtual disk file and hit this file looking icon right here. Now we're not going to select any of the options that we have here, right? This is the trick here. We're not going to select either of these. We're going to instead add another disk. We're going to go to downloads. The file that we have created before, right, the one that we have extracted, the Metasploitable 2 zip, I'm going to double click, and you should see this VMDK file right here. right? This is going to contain the configurations for our box. I'm going to double click it, hit choose, and we should be good to go. I'm going to hit create. Now we have just created our Metasploitable 2 box. Right? And if I double click this, it should boot up, it should have no problems running, and it should be good to go. Right? So I'm going to let this boot up. Uh, I'll probably put a transition in here so you don't have to wait for it. So be on the lookout for that. All right, welcome back. So as we see, we are now on the Metasploitable 2 machine. To log in, the credentials are MSF admin for username and MSF admin for password. No spaces. Um, we can also see that those credentials are listed up top here. I can't really... As soon as my mouse goes into the box, unfortunately, it eats my mouse. So I do apologize. Can't really highlight there. Um, now, the key here, though, right, is a lot of you are probably wondering, okay, that's great. I just got Metasploitable 2 running on VirtualBox. 
but how do I get it to communicate with my Kali machine, right? How do I get these two things to work, right? The whole point of having this metasploitable box is so I could pen test it with my Kali machine, right? How do I get those two to be able to communicate with one another? Um, I just spilled water, intermission incoming. All right, thank you all for waiting through that intermission. Uh, one of the best and worst things about being Italian is all of the violent arm movements. Uh, and unfortunately, I had flung a cup of water across my desk um, all the way onto some wire. So just need to clean that up real quick. Uh, but to get back to it, as I was saying before, right, we need to get it so our Kali machine can talk with our Metasploitable machine. Now, this is where VMware and VirtualBox differ quite a bit. The way in which we configure these machines to be able to communicate with one another is actually through this tools pane, right? So we can see here, we actually have, and if you don't have this, all you'd have to do is hit create. It's not that hard. Um, we have a network, right? This host only network adapter. So I just created another one just to show you how that is, right? Chances are you're just gonna have this default one here and this works perfectly fine. In order to get it so that our Kali machine can talk with our Metasploitable machine, we're gonna have to right click on Kali, hit settings, we're going to go to network and we're going to add an adapter, right? You might have one that's disabled. Add an adapter called host only. This is what's going to put our Kali machine on the same network as our Metasploitable 2 machine, right? So once again, I have my adapter number one is NAT. This is what gives my Kali internet access. Adapter number two is going to be the private network that my Metasploitable 2 machine will be able to communicate to my Kali on or with my Kali on, right? So just make sure to enable host only. Now you should only have one option here, right? Unless you have created another network, right? But just make sure that the name matches up. I'm gonna hit okay. Next up, right click Metasploitable, hit settings, go to network. Um, you don't need a NAT on this, right? I would actually disable that. You probably shouldn't have NAT on your Metasploitable machine. Um, but what you do need, right, is let me change the NAT. You do need this to be on host only adapter as well, right? So once again, Kali needs at least one adapter that is on host only and Metasploitable 2 should only have one adapter that is host only. And now they're on the same network. So let's boot them both up. I wanna show what it looks like when these two talk. So this is Metasploitable. All right, this is Kali. So both these boxes are booting up, right? I will log in real quick to Cali. All right, Metasploitable is up and running. We can tell because the login page is prompting me. Cali is up and running as well. All right. So, pretty cool background, huh? That's pretty nice. Uh, we have two machines, two boxes open. All right, let's find out what is the... Uh, private IP address of my Metasploitable machine. I'm going to type in IP space A, right? And I can see that the IP address is 192.168.17.6. Let's go to Kali and let's ping that IP. So I'm going to ping 192.168.17.6. And as you can see, I get 64 bytes back from so basically what's happening is this machine, my Kali machine, my attacking machine, is currently pinging my Metasploitable machine on the right here. Now, of course, we could launch real attacks, right? I could MMAP scan this as well, 192.168.17.6, right? And I could find out what ports are open and all that. Um, but if you get this far, you have now installed Metasploitable 2, connected it to your Kali machine, and you are ready to pen test. So thank you for joining me in this video. I will see you all in the next video.